Hello, everyone. I'll be doing a presentation on the, quote, feel-good pleasure trap focus. So this is where we, we do what, quote, feels good. If it, quote, feels good, then it is good. Don't think about it anymore. Just feel it and do it. This is to be motivated primarily by what, quote, feels good to the ego self above rational or moral considerations. It puts us in a lower and baser consciousness focus that motivates our choices in life. If we're, quote, feeling good, then all is, quote, good. It's about, quote, feeling good, gratification, amusement, enjoyment, satisfaction, ease, comfort, and convenience that drives behavior, not higher order processing to understand aspects of reality to help us on our path in life. Truth and falsity, right and wrong, are not properly discerned, and what, quote, feels good to us personally is what we believe to be what is, quote, good or right. This is due to an infatuation with the illusory aspects of our sensory and emotional perceptions that have us accept things on face value and not dig deeper. We accept appearances and don't uncover the substance. We accept many of these illusions because they, quote, feel good, so they can't be wrong. Why bother to dig deeper when we already have the answer that, quote, feels good and possibly appeals to our sense of self, self-view, and worldview? We often fool ourselves all too easily. Anything that, quote, feels good is desired and maintained. We become attached to feeling good. We avoid letting go of that thing we depend on to make us, quote, feel good, whether it is alcohol, taste buds, sex, parties, endorphin rushes, uh, endorphin rushes, TV, drugs, plant substances, or meditation. We want to, quote, feel good, so we focus on, quote, feeling good as the most important thing. We want to escape our stressful lives rather than working to understand the root causal factors in order to change it. Remaining attached to, quote, feel-good desires has us avoiding the real, hard, great inner shadow work to evolve, because it involves much effort, time, energy, dedication, determination, and persistence. This is not easy, comfortable, convenient, pleasurable, etc. So instead, just be happy, enjoy your life, have fun, etc. No serious reflection and contemplation on our way of living, being, and behavior in life. Don't try to understand how our actions are responsible for creating harm. Delude ourselves by ignoring and denying reality that doesn't, quote, feel good. Many people prioritize making others or themselves, quote, happy to, quote, feel good. As if that's the main goal in life. Many also wear positivity masks. Many interactions are faked and false as a result. There's some pleasure trap life models that you can recognize if people put these things as what they champion and what's most important in their lives. Some of them that I've come across are the pursuit of happiness, enjoy life, live life, follow your passion, follow your bliss, live in the now, experience the now, Experiences are all valid. We're here to experience everything. So some of these are okay as part of life, but they're a detriment as a primary focus for life that limits seeing beyond ourselves. So what that means, what I mean is, when you put happiness above moral considerations, or rational considerations of, of what's going on, like, you know, you could, which will begin, uh, it'll be coming up in pre, um, Additional slides, sorry there, that just because something tastes good doesn't mean it is good for you. So you need to use your rational thinking to actually evaluate if something's right or wrong, good or bad. And the moral dimension is also the same. So when you're putting happiness, just enjoying life and living life, as long as you're living life and enjoying life, then it doesn't really matter what you're actually doing or what's happening around you. You know, I'll just let those people, oh, they're doing things wrong, whatever, 
it's not my life. I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to go on on an adventure. I'm going to go on a hike. I'm going to go do um, whatever I want to do. I'm just going to enjoy and live life. And whatever's going on over here, I don't have to pay attention to that. I can just ignore that. So we're not seeing beyond ourselves. We're limited to ourselves because of we're, we're trapped in this ego self feel good pleasure trap. So you can enjoy life, live life, pursue happiness, but not as, as the as the main thing. Sure, follow your bliss, etc. And live in the now, yeah. But it's not all, all about living in the now and in the present moment. You have to think about the future and and um, evaluate the past in order to go forward in the future. You know, it's not simply about experiences are all valid, yeah, good or evil, it doesn't matter. They're all just experiences and they're all valid to experience. It's not like we have any responsibility to try to remove the harm we create or the harm others create and try to better our human condition or the the condition of the planet. No, no, no. You know, it's just experiences are all valid. We're just here to experience everything. So experience everything, you know, live that middle path. Don't try to align yourself with truth, with right and good and morality. Just to experience everything. It's all, they're all valid. This is the delusion that some people actually live by. And I've encountered these people in the new age and pseudo spiritual movements. They, they believe whatever they want to believe. And that's what leads them in life. And one of the big problems. So I've mentioned this in my other work. First problem is consciousness, not understanding ourselves. From there, we choose to believe whatever we want to believe. And from there, we get to believing that whatever feels good is actually good. And this is what motivates so many people in our lives. So the latter forms are descriptive of, of a mind virus to accumulate experience. The former are also rooted in our infatuation to continually replenish our repository of experience, like doing things, to keep us from boredom and truly having to take the initial outsider, isolated and solitary journey of self-discovery and reality discovery. The substantive, authentic, examined, realized and actualized life is one where the mind, psyche self of the experiencer goes through renewal and rebuilding, not simply the renewal of experiences. The lost, the quote lost and consciously quote unawakened are asking for more stimulus, distractions and things to be provided to them for the continued avoidance of boredom or unsatisfactory conditions and ultimately avoidance of the quest to know thyself, to self-realize and actualize ourselves for the better. Engage in all the many, quote, passions of the external world and ignore the confused and clouded internal state, letting everything keep going on as it is, conditioned to accept the status quo. So as I said before, yeah, just let, you know, whatever's going on over there, yeah, ignore that, you know, we're, we're, we're living in the same country, in the same community, things are happening, but whatever. I just want to focus on me and, uh, you know, enjoying life, pursuing happiness, living life, following my passion and my bliss, and uh, living in the present moment, you know, what's going to happen if things keep going on this path in our nation or our country or our world or community, you know, what's going to happen, we're going to self-destroy ourselves, you know, who cares, experience the now and live in the now, don't think about the future and, and where we're headed, based on where we've been and where we are now, now don't try to figure things out, you know, just just stay in the now, and it's all about now, and just keep experiencing those feelings and and experience and associate emotions and feelings to those experiences and just follow your bliss and be just be happy all the time yeah just look for things that always make you happy because that's going to improve the world and the condition of everyone and yourself and make things better no so we need to let go of the feel-good focus and face hard uncomfortable truths Stop avoiding the truth that removes the illusory, quote, happiness, quote, feel good, comfort, convenience, and ease of living. We have many crutches that produce sensations in our body or minds to feel, to fill us with, quote, feel good comfort or, quote, happiness. This allows us to escape facing the dark side of the reality before us or escape from our current life choices that bring us stress and discomfort. Realize the real lies with real eyes. I put happiness in quotes and feel good in quotes because 
much of the things that can feel good and make us happy, they're just based on personal infatuations and inclinations towards things. So all the entertainment and all this stuff, we just get so immersed in all these distractions and just get so wrapped up in the psychological and emotional dimension that is induced into us through our um, environment of the, the conditioning and the, t- the television, the media, the government, the school and indoctrination. This creates a false worldview compared to how things actually are, how the reality actually is. It's easy and convenient to simply continue living the same way as we already have been. There is no effort required in not changing. It takes real hard work to face a truth and align with it to change our behaviors. Embodying and living those values we want to uphold is a hard and long job. It's easier to pretend we are already there and go on living as we currently are, not facing our potential wrongdoings. This is why change for the better is truly hard. Facing ourselves. To face the immorality of our actions is to face the harm and trauma that our actions and behaviors are responsible for creating in other psychological beings. We have the power to do better. Pleasure and happiness happens in life. Emotions vary. We experience a range of emotions depending on situations. Quote, feeling good isn't supposed to be the number one focus in life. Lastly, here are some examples of feel-good focus that limit the perception of truth. Just to give some examples so you can understand more what I'm talking about, about how this pleasure trap, feel-good focus, limits us in our understanding of ourselves and of reality. Negative emotions are signals for how things are wrong in the world or in ourselves. The default emotional state is neutral, not always happy or sad, etc., Emotions vary. They are not static. Emotions come from experience and tell us about what is happening as it relates to us. A joke is made, we laugh, and then the joke is over and the laughing stops, and you're back to a neutral state at some point after the effect has faded. Some other stimulus can create sadness, but that passes too. A positive emotional state doesn't reflect something actually good occurring. If we, quote, feel good doing something, thinking about it being wrong doesn't often factor in unless we care to understand if something is wrong or not. Did you make money? Then whatever you did was, quote, good, right? So many people get happy. They feel good about them. Say, hey, I made some money. So whatever I did to make the money or whatever, I have an idea to make money. So whatever I'm going to do to make that money Well, it's good for me, so therefore it's good for me to do it. And how dare anyone tell me that it's wrong, or immoral, etc. This is how we can self-deceive ourselves. We put other things above what's morally right, what's right over wrong, what's true over false. If we put money above that, then we're going to be leading ourselves based on money first, and not moral considerations first. The money will override moral considerations, the same as if we put taste above moral considerations, or any other feel-good, pleasure, sensation, or psychological stimu- uh, psychological um, state, positive, emotional, psychological state that makes us feel good, then we're, we're always going to try to validate it if we're not also thinking about whether it's right or wrong or true or false. So another example is we can laugh and try to make things light and happy in negative situations instead of dealing with it in truth. This is bypassing the negative situation, not resolving it. We can laugh at other people's harm. And also, just because something tastes good doesn't mean it is good. Sugar, candy, etc. You don't just try eating um, things just full of sugar all the time and not eating a proper diet and see if it's actually good for you. This is the part of rational thinking. When you're not putting rational thinking, you're just, oh, this tastes good or this feels good. It appears good. And you're you're just staying at that level of appearances. You're not digging to the substance. Well, you're not going to know if it's actually good or not. 
We only think something is good because it appears good to the senses. The pleasure trap focuses on what, quote, feels good to sensory stimulus or capacities of consciousness, such as emotions or other psychological states. So that's the end of this brief introduction on the feel-good pleasure trap focus, and I have other work that I've done in the past that I'll probably bring forth in the future, but this was more of a trying to, I guess, concentrate some of the stuff, and I have more elaborations to explain it more, but um, this is like a an intro presentation. So thank you very much for your time and attention. Have a nice day. Take care. Peace. Care. Peace. Care. Peace. Care. Peace.